Hi, it's Robin. I heard it's December, and just like Septandi a few months ago, a number of vintage computer YouTube channels are getting together and focusing on a particular computer platform, more specifically MS or PC DOS. So I thought I'd get in on the action. Here's one of my computers I haven't shown on the channel before. It's an IBM PC Junior. It's got a built in floppy drive, 128K RAM, this strange wireless keyboard, two cartridge slots, and this was IBM's failed attempt to make a home computer. Of course, later IBM compatible computers became very common in the home. When I was first introduced to IBM compatible hardware, I was pretty perplexed that when you turned on the computer, if it didn't have an operating system boot disk, it just did nothing at all. And then even if you did have a DOS boot disk, you didn't necessarily have access to a basic programming language like I was used to on my Commodore machines. However, one thing that I think they did right on the PC Junior was that it has basic built into ROM. We can do Control Alt Delete to reboot the machine just to see the boot sequence here. And after just a few seconds, it boots into BASIC. And this BASIC is fairly familiar to me coming from the Commodore background. I figured out how to do the equivalent of my 10 print character string. But instead of the character 205, we have to use 47, which is the regular slash. And then we'll subtract 45 times a random number from 0 to 1, then check if it's less than 0.5, and that truthfulness here results in either a 0 being returned if it's false, or a negative 1 if it's true, just like Commodore Basic. This is a Microsoft Basic as well, so it, that's why it has so much in common with Commodore. So if random 1 is greater than 0.5, then this returns 0 times 45, which is just 0, and we end up printing character 47, which is the slash. But if random 1 returns less than 0.5, then this is true, which returns a negative 1 multiplied by minus 45 is plus 45, added to 47 is character 92, which is the backslash. So it'll just print one of those two characters to simulate the two diagonals that the Commodore will print to create the maze. Close the bracket, semicolon, colon, and this is just the same as on the C64, except that you must put a space between go to and a line number. It's a bit more picky that way. Okay, let's try and run that. And there you go. It's the more or less the familiar 10 print maze. The slash and backslash aren't quite as pretty as the Commodore slash, which goes right up into each corner. This has a bit of a little bit of a gap between each character, but it works pretty nice. The PC Junior keyboard is actually lacking a lot of keys. It doesn't have the number pad that you might be familiar with. Actually, because it's wireless, I can just pick it up here has the cursor keys in a group, and it has a function key up here that's a lot like more modern laptops to get at some of the special functions. All the function keys are mapped across the top numeric keys, and to do something like a break, we have to hold down the function key and then hit the B that has the green break on it. Oops. I have to put that back. It's actually just line of sight, so I have to put it back in place to actually break the program. And we can list it there. Okay, but this computer, in addition to the built-in basic, it has some other things built into ROM. If we hold down Control alt and insert it'll reboot into this test diagnostic mode. So while the kilobytes count up, we can choose different options of what we want to test. 
try here going over to nine. This is testing each channel. The PC Junior actually has improved audio and improved graphics, 16 color graphics, and a proper multi voice sound chip. And even though the PC Junior was a failure, Tandy actually borrowed these exact concepts in their much more successful line of PC compatibles. It's kind of funny that Tandy was able to beat IBM at their own game. So if we do control delete again and boot back to basic. Now here's another kind of arguably an Easter egg. Right when the computer boots, if we hit escape, this happens. This animated fella, apparently named PC, shows up and you can move him around the screen with the cursor keys. Now, this isn't truly a hidden Easter egg because here in the ominously named Guide to Operations that shipped with the PC Junior, it has this section, Getting Started, It's Easy, will take you step by step. Okay, what to expect when you turn your IBM PC Junior power on? Well, we get little cartoons. Don't really expect cartoons in an IBM Guide to Operations, but here we are. And there's this little guy here, PC, and here it says, Running the Keyboard Adventure, press the Escape key, and it starts this little game. So apparently our first goal is to grab that little shape in the top left corner, which looks like a boot, but apparently it's an Enter key. There, he kind of glitches out. And you'll notice that door has opened. Kind of reminds me of the Pac-Man maze. And we can go into it and this happens. Okay, so here he is. And this is fairly bizarre. If you push a key on the keyboard, it took me a while to figure out what was going on. But each time you press a key on the keyboard, PC there moves down to the that section at the bottom and puts a marker there that you've pressed that key. So we've I've now pushed all four cursor keys, and you can see them down there in the corner. I'll press Z. And it's typed it up at the top. Backspace. I guess this is a fun way of learning the keyboard. It also doubles as a keyboard diagnostic, but maybe the world's most tedious one. So in the documentation, it actually goes on and on. Running the keyboard adventure. Now we're at 213, 217. It's still going here on page 237. Here at the end. Now that your journey through the keyboard adventure is over, we hope you had some fun and learned something. Feel free to come back for a visit any time. The next time you join us, you may discover some secret adventures. Did we tell you what happens when you press the function and F1 or shift FN and the F2 keys? No, you didn't tell us that, but this bit about secret adventures got me intrigued. So what does happen if we press function? Function F1. Well, there's that music, which we can actually break. And if we press Function F2, it plays Beethoven's Fifth, I believe. Kind of reminds me of the Frantic Freddy music we heard a few episodes ago. And then you just kind of mess around with the keyboard, and you find that if you hit function F7, it finishes the whole keyboard. And if you hit F8, again, that's function plus 8, you can actually start controlling him again. Mm. 
So this had me intrigued. So I started searching around, and I found the Eugene PC Jr. newsletter from March 1995. Apparently, this was the last surviving PC Jr. users group from presumably Eugene, Oregon. They had a write-up here about the Keyboard Adventure Solution, adapted from a paper by Chris Bial, submitted by an unnamed ex-IBM employee. And it goes into a bunch of details. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can download this. But give some hints. So if we start the level and grab that enter key again, but instead of going in the door, go down below. Then you can actually go up through this part. And down he falls into his adventure again. But things are a little different. There are eight dashes under him. And that might make you think of Hangman. Well, you'd be right. We'll use that F7 just to fill in the keyboard and get that over with. So this is like a puzzle game. And of course, this is going to be a spoiler. If you want to solve this for yourself, quit watching and go figure it out. So what's an eight character string that they would hide in the IBM PC Junior? Well, how about IBM PC Junior? Let's try that. Press enter. Okay. So it's filled in the first letter. I think that is an I. I'm not sure why it looks a little... <laughs> it's like it's missing a couple pixels. So I is correct. And I tried for a while to solve this myself. Type in B. It just ignores it. Or you try typing in IBM PC Junior again. Nothing. The later letters are IBM PC Junior, but it gets increasingly tricky to actually get the letter to appear. You can't just type them in. So the next one, if you press function F8, that allows you to move him. And if we go down here, just like from the shift key, ZXCVB is the sixth key from the left. If we move to the sixth key here and put his hands on it, you see B has appeared. Okay, so that one's not all that hard. But I tried doing the same with M, which should be just two characters over here. No such luck. So this gets super obscure. I don't know how anybody could have ever solved this without inside information. Maybe if they disassembled the ROM, they could figure it out. So we have to get out of that movement mode by pressing F8 again. Then it allows us to type in the top corner, Shift M, and we can press Enter, but it doesn't appear. Then what we have to do is start music, maybe because of the letter M, I don't know. Function F1. And while the music is playing, press F10, or function 0. And there. Now the IBM has appeared. We can stop the music now. Okay. So what do we need next? We need a space character. And I tried a bunch of things. I really was trying to solve more of this on my own. But... Once again, I cheated. So apparently what we have to do is put in a null character here. And we do that by holding down Alt, Function, N, then Alt, 0, and then again, Function, N, and then we press Enter, F8, to allow him to move. And you move him down to between the 7th and 8th blanks, and then move up. And there, you see that that 4th character dash has disappeared, and we got our blank. Isn't this terrible? So again, F8. 
to exit movement mode, and then we'll type in the shift P, then enter function eight, alt function nine. <laughs> and there it is. And then now we want to type the shift C. Oh, now we're going to hit F8 to exit movement mode. Shift C. Enter movement mode. And then shift function 3. And F8 to exit movement mode. <laughs> So the music has to keep playing. If you're too slow, then you actually have to start the music again to get that C in. I got it done just in time there. Okay, and then we're finally here. We're going to type JR in lowercase, and then we're going to press Enter, and then we're going to hold down Alt and F1. And there we go. This is the bizarre finale. All those flickery guys. If I hit Shift T. And if you press Shift T, it just continues playing for a bit longer. If you didn't press it, it would already be done. Although the flickery guys uh, have stopped flickery. Anyway, <laughs> that is our reward. <laughs> Some reward, eh? So that's PC. IBM PC Junior. That's kind of like one of the strangest Easter eggs I've ever encountered. Very obscure. And if you hit Shift-T, it should exit out. There, and now... The keyboard adventure has begun anew. So... Please subscribe. Syntax error. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks to my patrons for their support, and thank you for watching. If you want to see other Dossember videos, please check the description in the link below. And there's also, I think, a hashtag, Dossember, that you can click on and see more videos. This is a great opportunity to find some more retro computer channels on YouTube that you might not have seen before. And if you like their videos, don't forget to subscribe to them too. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.